name is Tristan McMullen. I'm a consultant eye surgeon and I specialise in surgery in and around the eye uh, and the face, um, both for functional and cosmetic reasons. And I've been asked to talk about fat preservation or conservation uh, with regard to cosmetic surgery. There was a vogue in the past for removal of fat, um, but this, the thinking on this has changed to the point that now it's appreciated that if you take away fullness, if you take away volume, you're accelerating what is an aging change. A baby's face is nice and full, whereas a, a very elderly person's face tends to look rather gaunt and skeletalized due to tissue loss. And this is both tissue loss relating to fat loss and thinning and wrinkling and stretching of the skin, and obviously gravity plays an important part in this. And you're probably aware that there's been a, a big surge in the use of fillers uh, in and around the face and elsewhere in the body. And this is to replace volume. And so the logic um, of removing fat has gone out the window, and now we tend to preserve it as much as possible. And if we're going to, to take fat, it tends to be replaced. So in the upper lid, there is a, a, a small area of fullness that can um, become prominent with age at the inner corners. And this is about the only place where I would remove fat. Otherwise, I would conserve it or, or move it. And there's a um, phenomenon with facial aging where you get what's called a tear trough, tri tear trough which is really due to mid-facial descent and um, a loosening of the tissue that holds the normal fat back. So when we see people with fat in their lower lids, this is normal fat that has just um, become more prominent. And the way that I would treat that would be to redrape that fat into the tear trough to hide the hollow between the bulge of the cheek and the bulge of the lower eyelid and remove that hollow by replacing the bulgy fat here into that hollow. It would be dishonest to say you don't remove any fat, but uh, there's certainly a, a move or a tendency to maintain that uh, rather than remove it. And um, obviously you have to treat each patient differently and assess their needs, but uh, many, many patients um, just need a little bit of fat removal, if any, and replacement rather than removal. There will, of course, be some patients that do need you know, some fat to be removed, but they tend to be the exception rather than the rule. And uh, similarly, when one's talking about uh, volume in the, in the eyelids, there used to be a, a vogue for removing skin and the underlying muscle from the upper eyelid um, to remove the so-called excess skin or um, eye, eye bags. But nowadays, um, what we tend to do is remove the skin and then bunch the muscle up underneath it so that the skin is shortened but the underlying tissue is kind of concertinaed and, and wrinkled up to, to make a nice full appearance. And that's a youthful look that patients wish to um, regain when they're embarking on eyelid surgery. And the other consequence of that is that you're not removing the muscle that closes the eye, which then reduces the chance of them getting dry eye symptoms, particularly if these are pre-existing. And so it's a kind of win-win situation. And similarly, in, in the lower eyelids, one tends to um, try and preserve the muscle as well. But that's a, another topic for another talk.